Dr. Willis Patterson is my guest today. We're talking about his life, his career, his legacy, lots of different things going on in conjunction with the 2020 African American Music Conference at the University of Michigan. And Dr. Patterson, uh, in 2015, you published your autobiography, which you called The Unlikely Saga of a Singer from Ann Arbor. I wonder if you can tell us, just tell us a little bit, give us the gist of, of your genesis, as it were, growing up and getting interested in becoming a musician. Well, uh, it, it is an unlikely saga to me. Um, I was born and raised in Ann Arbor, as you just said, uh, and I um, always enjoyed singing even as a youngster in church and in the community center and, and various. In fact, I, one of the prides of my youth was being in the children's choir uh, for the Ann Arbor May Festival series um, uh, under the conduction uh, the conductorship of uh, Eugene Ormandy and the Philadelphia Orchestra. And I was a very proud representative of uh, my grade school, Jones School, wow. in, in that during that time, and um, um, I I always wanted to sing uh, and would have felt it incomplete, life totally incomplete, if I hadn't had an opportunity to do some singing, uh, not on stage or in opera or necessarily. But in whatever I was doing, I wanted to have a chance to do some singing because I, I enjoyed my voice, frankly, <laughs> and uh, I enjoyed <laughs> lyrics and I enjoyed, of course, the melodies and the harmonies. And so I that I that I eventually wound up being able to go to the University of Michigan and to uh, other academic institutions, Manhattan School of Music, and to study in Freiburg, Germany, uh, and to discover other uh, vehicles uh, of, of song uh, in which I could uh, mold to the expression uh, or find my voice being able to mold to uh, the expressions inherent in those songs. Um, it, it was very unlikely that, that it should happen to me. Uh, hmm. But it afforded me a, a, a wonderful series of experiences, both on and off stage and, and in association with many wonderful musicians uh, whom I've had the pleasure to be associated uh, over the years. Well, I think I can safely speak for Louise when I say we both uh, enjoy listening to you. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Now, you also have uh, done some very important work in discovering and propagating songs by uh, African-American composers and elevating them into, you know, the art song repertoire. We're going to hear a couple of songs by African-Americans, Howard Swanson and Edward Boatner. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about your interest in bringing that music to the public and the importance yes. of it. Yes. I, I'm, I'm going to say that that interest was triggered by uh, of, of reporters uh, reporting on a recital that I'd done in Germany. I, I was on a tour of America houses in Germany, and um, I was doing European songs, and but particularly Lieder, which I went to Germany to study, study because of my fascination with Lieder. Uh, just by the way, I found them very uh, comparable in their satisfaction to me to African American spirituals. Uh, in any case, I got this review of my recital by, uh, I, and I, I want to say it was in. Well, I can't remember the exact at this moment the exact uh, city. Anyhow, he criticized. The fact that I had sung for Germans um, European literature, which and I'd sung it reasonably well, but uh, he, he decried the fact that I had not sung 
art songs of American com- composers. Hmm. And um, I, I took some exception to that initially uh, and, and was a little bruised by it, my ego. Um, but I began to wonder about that because I didn't know of any American art songs. I had not no experience with them um, and didn't know that there were such cre- uh, creations. So I began then to uh, correspond with some of my previous colleagues at Virginia State, and at, uh, at the Southern University in Baton Rouge, and in other institutions like Howard University, and come to find out that there were lots of them, many of them mostly, mostly un, un, unpublished. And I thought, well, golly, I want to get acquainted with some of these. So I asked a specific professor at, uh, at Virginia State University, who had been a student at Howard University and studied uh, with uh, Dodd Duncan um, to send me a couple of them in Europe. And he did. That, that professor was Aldrich Atkins, and, and uh, mm-hmm. uh, Louise would remember him. He oh, sent yeah. me a couple, yeah. uh, and they were by John Work, a mm-hmm. fine composer uh, at the... In, at, uh, Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee, and um, that that started the, my curiosity of wanting to know how many others there were, and I come to find out there were far more than I had any idea of, and so I thought, golly, th- 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 this is a this is a, a, a an effort that that I should get involved with. I should get involved with trying to uh, uncover as many of these as I could and uh, finding so many of them uh, by by way of searching through the various libraries and collections in the, in the country, um, I, I then decided that I would uh, go into publishing them. And, um, People like me a, are so grateful. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm, I'm grateful for Having had the opportunity to be associated with that that exposure of those art songs to the general public, but particularly to singing musicians and their teachers, because these are um, uh, portions of the American contribution to world literature that really need to be uh, heard and sung. Well, speaking of singing, uh Songs like that, we have a couple of works here now by Howard Swanson and by Edward Boatner, I Know a Valley and Every Mail Day. Are, are those included in any of your anthology yes, work? The, uh, I Know a Valley is included in the um, first anthology. Uh, and uh, Every Mail Day, I believe I, I believe I published that in the second anthology. Um I'm not certain of that now that I'm saying it. Uh, uh-uh. It's not in, it's not in there. It's, it's not in the second it's, anthology? It's not. Uh-uh. <laughs> or in the spiritual <laughs> anthology? See, Louise is acting as your secretary right now. She... Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> and I, and I'm, I'm accustomed right? to, to, to being, to being um, supplemented in my accuracy or inaccuracy by her. Well, he had, I had the pleasure of being his assistant and going through all of the music, you know, with him when I was a student. So that was uh, the, okay. the, the delight, <laughs> getting to know this repertoire. Well, let's listen to these these two wonderful songs again. Uh, Willis Patterson, a fantastic bass professor emeritus at the University of Michigan, uh, performing here on FM 91. It's Afternoon Classics. I'm Brad Cresswell. We're having a listening party today. In conjunction with the 2020 African American Music Conference at U of M, Louise Toppin, the organizer of the festival, is here, along with Dr. Patterson himself. Music by Howard Swanson and Edward Boatner on FM 91. Oh, <laughs> 
bass Willis Patterson and pianist Herman Taylor performing two works, one by Howard Swanson called I Know a Valley and one by Edward Boatner, Every Mail Day. Music by African-American composers performed by Dr. Patterson, who is here with me today, along with Dr. Louise Toppin. Uh, Today launches the 2020 African-American Music Conference at the University of Michigan. We've been talking about that, having a little listening party today. Uh, It's also Dr. Patterson's 90th birthday coming up in November, and the entire uh, music conference over these next few days is dedicated to Dr. Patterson. (laughs) So I'm very glad that you could take some time out of your day to spend with us and, and tell some of these stories and share this music as well, Dr. Patterson. Um, let me ask you about this recording of Old Man River. Everybody knows Old Man River. I hear it sung by, uh, you know, people who don't necessarily have the depth and the low notes, and you've got it all, I have to say. <laughs> you, you, really, <laughs> you really dig into that, you know, that, that bass sound there. I, I love that. But you're performing with the uh, Michigan Glee Club, which I guess you uh, you directed for some time, yeah? Yeah, and that was my initial concert uh, with the uh, Glee Club. I'd been requested by them to do uh, something with them as uh, as a part of my introduction to the role of a conductor with them. And uh, so we came upon the fact uh, uh, that... Uh, Old Man River has a male chorus with it, originally in the uh, in the Rodgers and Hammerstein showboat. So we we decided that uh, that would be a appropriate way to introduce me to the Glee Club audience. Um, and that happens to be one of the things, one of the songs that my favorite uh, bass singer, Paul Robeson. Mm who was not only my favorite bass singer, but one of my favorite personalities on stage. I saw him initially as a, as a, uh, as, as in the, as in the stage presentation of uh, the Shakespeare Hotel in Ann Arbor when I was, oh, about 14 or so. Oh, well, a little earlier than that. In any event, he, he appeared in Ann Arbor at the old Majestic Theater um, with Jose Ferrer and Uta Hagen. Oh, I shall never forget. oh wow. Yeah, and I w- had the good pleasure of uh, being invited to go to hear him and, and, and uh, to see him at that, in that play and uh, became an absolute devoted fan of his uh, for the rest of my life. Um, so I, in finding out more about him, came upon his recording of uh, Old Man River, and I thought, wow, if I ever get a chance to do that uh, and do justice to it, that's what I'd like to do. Well, you absolutely did justice to it in this recording we're going to listen to. Uh, this is uh, a recording from Willis Patterson with the Michigan Glee Club, Old Man River, from the musical showboat here on FM 91. There's an old man called the Mississippi. That's the old man that I like. River, sung by Willis Patterson, joined by the Michigan Glee Club. That's a recording made many years ago when Willis Patterson was directing the Michigan Glee Club. Your first uh, actual concert, you said, with them. Was that back in the late yep. 60s, it would have been? Late 60s, now. In fact, 1969. Wow. Dr. Patterson is here with me today. Dr. Louise Toppin is here as well. They're both from... The University of Michigan, Willis Patterson, Professor Emeritus and former Associate Dean 
He is the featured guest for the 2020 African American Music Conference at the University of Michigan that's happening this afternoon and running through Sunday. Lots of wonderful events, all organized by Louise Toppin, and all of them organized around Willis Patterson. So we're having a listening party today. We're spending some time with Dr. Patterson. And, you know, you've been here for some time, Dr. Patterson. You're celebrating your 90th birthday. You've seen a lot. We talked about back in the early 60s when you took NBC television to task over presenting white singers in blackface, and and you were able to make a change in some small way there by singing that role in A Mall in the Night Visitors yourself. Um, I wonder if looking back and looking at current events, you know, there's so much unrest. uh, There's so much in the way of social injustice still going on. Um, Black Lives Matter is more prominent than ever, but they're still facing, you know, more, I would say, adversity than ever in many different ways. Uh, What do you see... You know, looking back on that and looking at current events, and as you mentioned to me, it, it ties in a little bit with what we're going to hear next by uh, Matthew Rose. Yeah. Um, in fact, let me just start my reflections on, on your question um, <clears throat> by talking about Matthew Rose. Okay. Uh, I, I should tell you that I've been in the midst of doing a lot of reading of recent and I've just finished the book cast by, uh, entitled Cast by Isabel Wil- Wilkerson, uh, who is a Pulitzer Prize winner. Uh, and uh, she does a marvelous job of comparing the caste system of India, uh, of uh, Nazi Germany back in the 40s, mm-hmm. and the United States. And the United States is unfortunately... Uh, comes out in third place in t- in terms of the severity of racism, which she relabels as the American caste system, African Americans being the untouchables mm. or comparable to the untouchables. Matthew Rose was a f- was a freshman s- student in composition in uh, uh, at uh, at the undergraduate level in the seventies, the mid seventies from Chicago, wonderfully talented young black uh, composer, pianist, uh, who came to me. Uh, we, we had a good association and relationship with one with another. And he came to me saying he'd like to do a set of songs. Uh, and he, he wanted to do them uh, on spiritual themes and texts. But he wanted to do them... Uh, in his own arrangements. So I said, fine, good, do that. He said, my only point is that I want you to sing them. Mm. So I said, fine. And so he came, made several visits to my studio and to make sure that he was making the arrangement uh, in a way that would uh, complement my voice, etc. He came up with these songs. And I uh, just talked with his his uh, wife. He, by the way, uh, passed uh, about seven years ago uh, prematurely with a heart condition. Mm. And his his wife gave me the permission to uh, publish those songs. <clears throat> I hope I will be able to do so. In any case, the songs as I listened to them for the first time since I performed them um, in, in the, I guess the 80s, I did them, early 80s. Um, the songs put me in the mind of a dramatic uh, portrayal of the George Floyd circumstance. Mm-hmm. George Floyd, you may remember, was Mm -hmm. the person around whom almost all of the demonstrations of the recent uh, two or three months have have been uh, been generated. Yeah. Um, He his last words were for his mother, and 
the first song in that set of three songs is Sometimes I Feel Like a Motherless Child. And then rehashing my um, circumstance of, uh, of, 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 as a youth, being a, a frequent singer in the church and very well acquainted with the church spirituals and all, uh, and and with the philosophy as as it as it uh, or the imaginative uh, lecturing of ministers, I thought about him and the following song, which was Deep River. The Deep River being the River Jordan, and in the minds of many of African American ministers, is that business of crossing over the River of Jordan on the way to heaven. And the third song, and I, I just went off and, and, and sort of cast these songs in George Floyd's circumstance, imaginatively. The third song is right on King Jesus, and that is the final circumstance and the transition from life to death. In, in the African-American church very often, as it's expressed, riding with King Jesus in heaven. Now, that impact of, of, of those circumstances dramatically, and of course, uh, Matthew Rose didn't have any idea of this because he was just doing the spirituals in a different setting. But they are so... It is almost as if he was uh, prescient in his setting those songs, or uh, at least um, making them in such a fashion, uh, setting them in such a fashion as caused me to make the relationship of of the uh, circumstance with with uh, George Floyd, and that, and then the final the final circumstance is for me is that that is spoken to in such an eloquent and unique fashion by Isabel Wilkerson in her book cast. I became a fan of hers with her first book, uh, the, the Wants of other sons in which she talked about the great migration of African Americans after em emancipation uh, to the Midwest and the North and the South, all the way up to Alaska, with great disappointment that um, what they were seeking uh, was freedom from slavery and all, of course, but a portion of the American dream. And, uh, and that's still a pursuit that, uh, unfortunately, we have yet to, uh, to seek to seek the fulfillment of. Well, you're expanding not only our art song uh, listening repertoire, but also our reading list as well. <laughs> yes, so, I, I, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to pass that along to you. I think yeah. it's a work that yeah. should be read by every American because it gives us a view of really how we are seen by the rest of the world. Well, let's yeah. listen to this this music that you mentioned, uh, arranged here by Matthew Rose, and thinking of it and listening to it and feeling it in terms of contemporary events and the death of George Floyd and all of the other unnecessary, unjust deaths of African Americans. Um, right. I think that it is, that his arrangement in particular kind of takes it out of the that traditional repertoire when you're listening to it because there are some unfamiliar sounds or some unfamiliar ways of approaching these well-known melodies. It was beautifully said, uh, the way that you described it. Dr. Willis Patterson performing these three traditional uh, African-American spirituals is arranged by Matthew Rose. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child, deep river, and ride on. King Jesus.
Three traditional African-American spirituals as arranged by Matthew Rose. We heard Sometimes I Feel Like a Motherless Child, Deep River, and Ride On King Jesus. All of them sung by Willis Patterson. Willis Patterson is my guest today, along with Louise Toppin, uh, Willis Patterson Professor Emeritus and former Associate Dean at the University of Michigan, quite a revered figure in the world of music and beyond. And uh, Dr. Patterson, you're about to have three days of an immersive experience in your in your life, <laughs> uh, courtesy of Dr. Toppin, who has arranged this uh, 2020 African-American Music Conference at University of Michigan. I am, in, I am indeed bracing myself for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had a wonderful time today having this, this listening party, uh, listening to some of these wonderful recordings that you provided to us. And we got a couple of little pieces left, uh, which are a bit of a departure. Uh, we've heard some art songs, some European songs, some uh, African American composers, music, and you know the classic "Old Man River," and those spirituals arranged by Matthew Rose. But now we got some jazz, and I got to say, boy, you know your voice, por- your voice ports just as easily from classical to jazz as anything else. It's a really smooth transition. Can you talk a little bit about your work in, in singing some of these jazz ballads? Yes, yes. Much of my early listening to music, well before I uh, called myself uh, aspiring to be a singer, was devoted to listening to spirituals and to jazz and to pop ballads as as put forth by um, Bing Crosby and it's Sarah Vaughan and uh, Billy Eckstein. And I got my first opportunities to sing locally. Um, they were divided between jazz and singing in the church. And singing in the church was not necessarily all spirituals. But I, of course, didn't get a chance to sing jazz in the church. So uh, I got my first opportunities to sing jazz 
in some of the centers, uh, you know, the, the community center and the and uh, high school. And I developed a, a great taste for jazz, as per, particularly as performed by Billy Eckstein and Sarah Vaughan. So um, I found that I was reasonably good at it, and um, uh, had a chance to to uh, do it on my own terms um, at the end of my regular recitals, faculty recitals here at the University of Michigan. I would invite friends of mine whom I'd become over the years acquainted with uh, to accompany me. Uh, in jazz combos, and uh, and I'd sing them, and and I thought it was a unique way to end my my recitals in, in a way that uh, had not been put forth by some of my university colleagues in the voice department. So that gave me a little bit of a one-upmanship, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I enjoyed it very very much. Well, you're still one upping uh, everybody else because it's a it's a yeah. nice unique way to uh, end our conversation today. I want to thank you, uh, Dr. Patterson, for spending some time with us. I want to wish you a very happy birthday, and folks can get a lot more Willis Patterson over the next few days. In fact, right now it's about to begin over there at University of Michigan virtually this festival. Uh, Louise Toppin has organized it. She's been very patiently listening with us this afternoon. Uh, Louise, you want to say anything else about uh, the uh, African American Music Conference? No, I just want to stress that it is a free conference and that we're, although we're going to study the legacy and talk about Willis Patterson, we also want to have an enjoyable time of looking at all that he has brought to our community and to our profession. Well, thank you so much, and thanks again to you, uh, Dr. Patterson, for, for And I want to it. thank you and your listeners for uh, permitting me this opportunity to reminisce. As I understand it, Dr. Patterson, you had a radio show at one time, so can I ask, yes, you, I can I ask you how I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I would say you're better than average. <laughs> <laughs> better than average. I'll take it. I will absolutely take it. So again, Dr. Willis Patterson, Dr. Louise Toppin, thanks so much for uh, joining us here on FM 91. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.